So how can you utilize these platforms like Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, Cody Sanchez, and Joe Rogan? Here are my four tips to help you use social media for personal branding in 2023. And I'll go ahead and tell you the fourth tip will absolutely change your life. And the first three are incredible strategies, but that fourth tip is gonna absolutely change your life. Who doesn't absolutely love posting endlessly on social media to grow your business and then get that's right, no results whatsoever. The reason this is happening for so many hardworking small business owners, because you're sounding like a sales robot, throwing out advertisements left, right, and center instead of adding value. What you need to do is start adding value to develop a personal brand. In the demand stage, there are 4.9 billion people on social media as of 2023. There are 3.7 million new videos posted every single day just on YouTube by itself. 60% of consumers in the US base their purchasing decisions on the company's executives, values, words, and actions. When consumers have a positive emotional association with the brand, they are 6.6 .6 times more likely to pardon a company's mistakes. They are 7.1 times more likely to buy from a company they trust, and 8.4% more likely to trust the brand in general when they like the person in charge. And that would be you if you're owning a business. Not only will you sell more from having a better personal brand, but you will also hire better talent and scale faster. Because the reason people work with you, the reason people buy from you, is not because your product or service is always just better. Sometimes it is, it absolutely should be, but it's really because they know, like, and trust you. The biggest benefit of having the brand, honestly, the level of talent that we're able to attract with acquisition.com compared to companies in the past, and like how much cajoling I had to do to get mm. people to you know leave their thing to come do our thing was significantly higher. And so you get better talent at better rates by having kind of the personal brand. You need to start winning in the online space to grow your business yesterday. So you've probably seen tons of businesses posting on social media almost endlessly. But have you ever stopped scrolling long enough to ask yourself, why am I stopping on this video? Who do I stop to watch? Who do I scroll past and why do I watch anything? People fail at social media because they don't understand that social media is simply a tool. It's a tool to develop a personal brand. They're missing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is developing that personal brand. Being successful on social media isn't the goal. The goal is to develop a strong personal brand through posting on social media. Personal branding isn't about just selling whatever your product or services that you offer. It's about adding as much value as possible for free for your ideal client to build trust so that your following or your future clients will associate a certain type of feeling and expertise with you and your mission and your company. In layman's terms, your followers will start to know, like, and trust you and therefore they'll wanna sit down with you and buy from you and work with you over anyone else because you've helped inspire them to do whatever it is that they are trying to accomplish. You know, we talk a lot about sales on my channel and most of you know, I did door-to-door -door sales for over seven years and I've talked to over 30 or 40,000 families when I sold educational resources door-to-door -door 80 hours a week on straight commission. So when you're cold calling and door-to-door -door sales, you have about 30 seconds to build trust at the door with someone that you've often never met before and they've probably never heard of you before. But with social media and marketing and personal branding, I was able to knock on doors and have up to 58% of the people that I talked to sit down with me for 20 minutes, hear about what I was doing, and 40% of those people would buy a $650 package or better from me in under 20 minutes. In fact, this terrible video of mine that you can see right here got 17.8 thousand views in an ultra niche area of 30,000 people in a county in Virginia. That's the difference between having a personal brand and online cold calling. I made this video purposely not great so that people could understand that I did not have a massive agenda. I said in the video that I was very carefree. I didn't care if people bought for me. I made the video and branded it towards my ideal audience because I knew that they would think if I was knocking on doors, maybe they would associate with me bad salesmanship or something like that or being pushy. And so I came off as, as likable as possible and I branded myself as the friendly neighborhood bookman, helping families with their kids' education. That was it and it made a massive difference. And having a brand like that in your niche market is the difference between cold calling and having people want to talk to you. I would knock on doors and I would know a lot of these people's families, a lot of their friends, and they would have seen me all over Facebook before I even knocked on their door. It helped disarm people. It helped me 
connect with people, and actually help them with their kids' education, which is exactly what they wanted anyway. How can you utilize these platforms like Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, Cody Sanchez, and Joe Rogan? Here are my four tips to help you use social media for personal branding in 2023, and I'll go ahead and tell you the fourth tip will absolutely change your life, and the first three are incredible strategies, but that fourth tip is going to absolutely change your life. Before we jump in, if you're not sure the difference between personal branding, marketing, and advertising, check out this video for more context. Link in the description, and there's one right here on the screen. So tip number one, I want you to start small and be different. I got a DM the other day, somebody who was like, yeah, it's easy for you to build this brand because you already have this big audience. I was like, dude, just start. In that six year period, I did not miss. Every week, one to three podcasts for six years. And so people are making podcasts and thinking in 90 days, they're somehow going to blow up. When the reality is that you're finding your voice for the first year, if the action is, did I make the post? Did I make the reach outs every day? Then you're a success. You check both boxes. If you're expecting to get rich quick off of posting on social media, it's not going to happen. In fact, the beginning's going to be really difficult. It takes a while for people to become accustomed to the fact that you're posting all the time and you have to have stability in order to build trust. And when you start with something, there is no stability. So it takes time. It takes investment in order to build trust through stability. So we need to post often. We need to post consistently. Okay. So there's amazing things and that you can share, this long-term strategy will solve a lot of problems if you keep at it and continue to do amazing things and share how and why you do what you do with the world. No matter where you are in business, even if you have zero followers on social media, growing an audience is not the first goal. The goal at the beginning is utility. Here's some simple math. So if you just started um, social media marketing to build a personal brand and you start with zero followers, once you get to 100, if all you did was grow 10% per month for the next five years, that's it, 10% per month for the next five years, small incremental steps, you'd have over 139,000 followers on your social media platform that you're posting on. So you will grow as long as you're consistent and you're adding value and solving problems for your people. When you make videos, when you make content, you can put them on your website, you can put them into your marketing funnel, you can put them into your sales process, right? Imagine an email to everyone coming into your sales process where you're saying your best points and they're getting to like you, they're getting to know you, they're getting to like you, they're getting to trust you before they even come to the sales meeting. I do this for all of my clients and it gets them excited about meeting with me instead of being apprehensive about a sales conversation. Um, imagine all of the future recruits that you have. There's a ton of video content where they can really learn about your, your strengths, your values, what you teach people, how you do your process before they even walk into the first interview. They can research and you can start funneling the right people to your business and saving time on that recruiting process process to get the right people to say yes based on your values. At the beginning, you're not going to make a ton of advertisement revenue or anything like that, but what you are going to be doing is building a foundation for sponsors later on. You're going to be building a foundation for all of your past and future clients to congregate and build a community around, and you're going to be building this niche following in something you're good at where you are the expert developing a brand around your values that people will respect, they'll like, and they'll follow you, and they'll want to work with you over everyone else because they know, like, and trust you, and they believe in your mission, vision, and values. If you want to stand out in your marketing or even a personal brand, just actually saying what you really believe, the thing that you're afraid of saying, because it maybe it's two or three or four beliefs that don't go with the uniform that you wear every day, actually makes you significantly more unique. And the reason is if you're copying everyone else, they have probably a bigger budget at this point than you do. So therefore your quality of content compared to theirs is going to be worse. And you're going to be saying the same exact thing. If the quality is better and you're getting nothing different, they're going to go with your competitor. You need to talk about you. You need to be unique. So there's a, there's an amazing test called strength finders 2.0 that would highly recommend that you take to help you grow your business. We just took this test and we read this book with the Lion Chasers Business Growth Club, which I invite you to join us on Facebook. And they, out of 34 strengths, the test comes up with your top five strengths. Now, according to the test, there's only 11 people in the world who have the same top five strengths in the same order as you do. So therefore, you are an extremely unique human being. There are things you know, there are things you're passionate about, there's expertise that you have that no one else has, and you need to talk about things that you're good at. The goal is to integrate all of your content across all of your different processes, your sales process to increase your closing percentage, or your recruiting process to increase your retention or your nurture process so clients keep coming back and keeping you top of mind.
If you're getting value from this video and want to learn more about growing your business, make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you get instantaneous um, notifications as well. Now on to tip number two, I want you to map your ideal audience member. Okay, this will help you be different. This will help you figure out what content that you wanna post about. It's the biggest mistake I see business owners make. When I first meet business owners that I work with as clients, they're making videos a lot. And oftentimes they're making decent videos that have decent ideas that would be helpful to people, but they're helpful to the wrong people. So a really good example is one of my awesome clients that I work with now. When we first were talking, they wanted to appeal to luxury real estate clients, but they were making videos about how to get out of the rental mindset. They were teaching people how to buy their first home when they were trying to sell to people who wanted to buy million dollar homes. If you're buying million dollar homes, it's often not your first home. So there's a disconnect there. And a lot of people are doing that. And so what you need to do is map your ideal audience. So an ideal audience map is essentially writing down who your client is based on their mentalities, their actions, their fears, desires, and everything that they feel. So you can create content that helps them solve their problems, gets them excited and inspired. So what that means is you need to write all of that out. Um, 10 to 20 things in every single category and make content to solve those problems for those people. And those people will then watch this because that's what they're struggling with right now. So if you don't know where to start, no worries. Go talk to your ideal audience members. Go talk to your clients. Go talk to your future clients, your past clients, people that you'd want to be your clients and ask them what are they struggling with that you can solve for them. Now, it's really important that you avoid being a chameleon and talking about things that you aren't an expert in or passionate about. You will quickly run out of content. You'll get frustrated you'll quit like the other 97% of people who quit podcasting on episode seven. Okay. What matters is that you're talking about something you care about um, and that can connect with your business. And if you started a business, you're probably an expert in that. So you can figure out, okay, what are the people I care about? Who do I want in here? What can I solve for them? Talk about those things. You'll never run out of content and you'll be appealing to the right people that you want in your sales process, your recruiting process, and so on and so forth. So tip number three, post regularly and change up your content mix. This is another big mistake I see for people. They're posting advertisement after advertisement after advertisement after advertisement, and it bores people to death. Like think about why you watch content. You know, when there's an advertisement and you're watching football, you're trying to skip the advertisement, go to the entertaining thing, and then you start posting all these advertisements and you expect people to watch your content. You've got to change it up and be different, okay? So 60% um, of your content content should be added value. More of your content needs to be helping your person for free than it needs to be about your business. Um, only 10% of your content should be about your business, advertisements and stuff like that. Um, if you do too much, people get really bored. 30% um, of your business should be reactions to current events, what's going on that relates to your niche audience's interests, okay? You need to be posting every single day, posting often. You need to have lifestyle posts sprinkled in every single day in your stories so people can understand that you're a human being and you're not just trying to call them and get them to interact with you just so you can sell. You need to be caring about others more than you care about money. And if you're not doing this, if you're not doing lifestyle posts, if you're not adding value to them, you know, sales with people, and that's why your clients aren't coming back. And that's why you're not going to build lifetime clients. And that's why um, you'll always struggle with cold calling. You have to switch it up. You have to add value to people to build a brand to where they want to talk to you. All right. So the fourth and final tip, this is my bonus tip. It's the most important tip on this entire list. We've been talking all about these intricate and industry specific best practices to use for your social media, for personal branding and marketing. But frankly, if you're the business owner and you're splitting your time between managing your social media, your sales, your administrative tasks, your bookkeeping and whatever else that you do, you are running your business incorrectly and inefficiently, and you're going to get stuck and be unable to scale. Okay. So the best tip that I could possibly give you for your business to absolutely change your life and help you scale, stop managing your personal and business social media accounts and leverage your time. Hire someone better than you at posting, hire someone who's an expert, hire someone who can save you time to focus on what you're best at. You're likely better at almost anything else other than social media, unless you've grown up and done social media media or taking classes or have a ton of experience in that area of the business. It's actually going to be drawing energy and causing you to limit your growth of the company. If all you're doing is focusing on this and trying to go through the painful learning curve that it takes to be good at social media. Everything I post on 
YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I don't personally post. I built out a marketing team. I built out a business that does this now professionally for other business owners so it can get done. The only thing I shoot over to them is lifestyle posts and then everything else gets posted. And I just come up with some of the ideas. I even have somebody who finds really good ideas for me and then I just write the script and go and record. That's how you want to do it as a business owner. It saves you time. It allows you to focus more on growing the business, sales, hiring, whatever it is that you're good at saves you a ton of frustration and man it helps you not have to learn an entirely new skill that you're probably not going to be great at that takes years and years and years to develop this will help you grow your business this is why i've created an entire company around helping business owners just like you develop a powerful personal brand and marketing funnel that will not only increase your sales but multiply your time and it's as simple as possible for the business owner because that's what i want so i want simplicity just like you do and that's why we literally handle everything for your business so you can focus on what is important to you will help you with strategy will edit for you will help you leverage your time will even post for you we'll do everything to help you grow your business because this does work and it makes a massive difference so if you want to grow your business and take it to the next level and get this whole marketing funnel thing figured out for the rest of time email me at josephignus1 at gmail.com and we can have a conversation if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my youtube channel for more and don't forget to hit that bell for instantaneous updates for when new videos come out if you want to learn why i am a big believer in leveraging podcasts to grow your business, check out this video. Links in the description or right here. Thanks for watching. Here are a couple quick words from our incredible sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Campus Cuts by Monica. Monica has been cutting hair for University of Tennessee students for more than 37 years. If you're a guy and you're going to UTK or you live within 15 to 20 minutes of campus, Monica is the place to go if you want a worry-free, stylish haircut that will make you stand out with the ladies. Did I mention she has a pool table and refreshments while you wait? Follow Campus Cuts by Monica on Instagram and book an appointment by calling her today.